Hi, my name is Marion Kalmer. I'm a farmer from Western Illinois. Um, been doing independent on-farm research for almost 40 years now. And uh, we're sitting in my long-term fertility plots today. Uh, maybe you've seen some of the videos uh, that I've been showing from earlier this summer, but uh, we were in an extreme drought from the end of April uh, up through about the 4th of July. Uh, just really not more than just a couple of tents and a lot of heat. And then things started to get a little better, and now we're seeing more of a normal weather pattern. But if you remember, uh, I have three scenarios here that we're gonna show you. One is where we haven't put any uh, phosphorus potassium on over the last 15 years. And then we're also going to show you where we've been putting on in our high fertility plots, a lot of fertilizer, and then we just leave it on top of the ground. And then last but not least, um, where we've incorporated it after 15 years and put that fertilizer into the root zone. So the thing about the drought is it really amplified um, the differences between these plots visually. And so we're back here. This is no fertilizer for 15 years. Um, you can see a lot of the, the leaves from earlier uh, that uh, were showing the potassium deficiencies and also some phosphorus deficiencies um, out there as well. But these leaves are really smoked now. Uh, they never recovered. We do have new growth after it started to rain. And of course, those are, those are a lot greener. But our ear height, really short corn. Um, they're not filling out real well, and we're gonna take a pretty good yield hit here on these particular plots. So let's shut down, and we're gonna move over and show you uh, where we've been putting the fertilizer on top of the ground and leaving it. So now we're in our uh, long-term high fertility uh, plot, um, and we put on about $1,100 worth of fertilizer here in a corn soybean rotation over the last 15 years. But the main thing is, um, my feeling is, phosphorus, potassium put on the surface, will stay on the surface. And so I've been no-tilling and, and you can see here um, all the residue from, from last year and uh, you know corn cobs down in here from two years ago. And so you can tell it's, it's never been tilled. And the problem when I took the soil test and we'll put it on the screen for you to see again, my top two inches is, is very high in nutrient levels but the root zone um, has been depleted. We just keep sucking out of the fuel tank and um, we have low levels. But when you average it all together, that soil tests look fantastic. Um, but anyway, it was obvious during the drought uh, that the corn roots uh, were starving to, to find nutrients for the plant. And here again, you can see our leaves. Um, here's one here, it's completely dried up. But these were the ones that had the Potassium deficiency was noticed first. We had a little bit of phosphorus um, because uh, the roots just, um, there was no moisture in the top two inches. And so it, it just couldn't get any nutrients that, that it needed. And uh, so the corn was stunted early, but of course we've got new growth now uh, since the weather's a little more normal. Uh, still the ear placement's pretty low. They're just starting to fill, they tasseled okay. And uh, I, think, I think we're gonna have a a respectable corn crop, but it's been hurt for, for sure. So we're gonna shut down here and then we're gonna move over and uh, show you the plot uh, where we took this $1,100 and we tilled it into the ground with a moldboard plow and a chisel plow. So we're in our third scenario. Um, you can tell we've, we've been doing tillage here and, and there's, uh, there's just no residue left on top. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. This is not a no-till problem. It's more of my management uh, that's led to this. So. Uh, uh, we took the $1,100 for the P and K in this high fertility plot, but then we two years ago moldboard plowed it into the soil and then mixed it and then planted right over the top. And we had a nine bushel yield advantage in soybeans last year to where we'd incorporated the P and K in the root zone where it belongs. Now, how much of that yield advantage came from the tillage? How much of it came from the fact that nutrients were in the root zone for the soybean plant? I do not know, but I do know nine bushel on a thousand acres, $130 an acre. And so that's $130,000 that uh, I left on the table last year. So then last fall, we fertilized it, chisel plowed it, and uh, we planted the corn right over the top. And obviously you can tell we got a lot healthier corn that you saw it in the earlier videos, how much taller it was. Uh, and you can see we've got good green leaves here. Um, even down here at the bottom, 
Um, we've still got pretty good color here. Uh, really, you know, here's one here, it's got a little potassium deficiency to it. But uh, for the most part, um, we got some pretty good sized ears here uh, that are starting to fill out and uh, some good healthy sized stalks, some good looking leaves. And I think we're gonna have a pretty respectable yield here. So uh, stay tuned um, after harvest is over, uh, we'll let you know how much yield advantage did we get to the plots where everything was the same other than the P and the K are in the root zone in this plot versus the other plot they were up on top. If you ever have any questions, you can send me a text message or call me 309-368-1182. Uh, um, talk some agronomics. Got any combine questions? Uh, or if you're wanting to tune up your corn head so you can chew these big stalks up into confetti, uh, we have the award-winning BT Chopper. Uh, you can always call my front office and get an estimate at 309-629-9000. Or if you want to see this and many other YouTube videos, uh, you can go to our website at calmercornheads.com. So with that, I hope you're getting some decent weather. I want you to be safe and we'll look forward to talking to you again after harvest is over. Have a great day.